um, one. 152 students, uh, high school students, go through our program, and um, the whole point mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, one thing that I didn't like about the traditional, I guess, um, education space is that everything is so focused on, hey, did you get into Harvard? Hey, did you get into um, Ivy League schools, right? And that's mm-hmm. not that's not really how um, it works for a lot of people. You know, some people are early early bloomers. Um, they. Um, find what they like and they work exceptionally hard at it and they get into these amazing schools but also there are other people who just don't maximize their potential earlier in their life and I think it's kind of cruel for um, people to judge them based on what schools they get into um, because everyone has the potential to be I you know, agree, amazing in life um, even- What's up guys? Welcome back. We're here. We've got another episode going and today we have someone who is super exciting. He's done so many things across the board and I really can't wait to talk about it. We've got Sean Kwan with us who not only just graduated from Vanderbilt, well, congrats on being a May 2020 graduate for starters. I know that's tough because I was there too, but (laughs) he studied human and organization development organizational development and on top of that he's done a couple of very notable things including starting a nonprofit, currently having his own startup called airship and also working as an emt all of which are just super great great things to do especially as such a young graduate so i think it's super impressive and sean we're super excited to talk to you Saad, why don't you take away the plug before we go any further but before before all that guys i don't have my knife today but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice today. Please hit the like and subscribe button. You know, it's right down there. Just do it quickly, and we can just get get on with the show. So, Sean, what is up? How are you doing? It's not 8 a.m. over there, I believe. How the hell yeah, are you up? <laughs> How are you guys? Thank you for having me. I'm super excited yeah. to talk about uh, anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for, man. We're yeah. here to talk about anything and everything. But. Dude, let's jump right into the yeah. thing I'm most excited about, or not the most excited about. But one thing I really admire is that you said you're you were an EMT, and how did you become an EMT? How does that happen? Because I know it's it's a really like respectable thing to do, but I'd never know how to become one. You know, so how does mm-hmm. that work? I see. Yeah. So I became an EMT when I was in sophomore year of high school, and that only happened because my mom uh, found out about. Uh, like what what an EMT program is and then my cousin was doing it so I naturally just Mm -hmm. like kind of followed along because I always thought you know I'll maybe I'll become a doctor or maybe I'll be working within the medical profession so I thought it would be a good idea to kind of get that early exposure um all you have to do is just sign up for a program Uh, you do have to pay for the program it's like two thousand dollars something like that and then it's a it's like six months long I think Mm -hmm. but um yeah I mean that's that's, that's how I became okay. MT. It's, that's really it's a cool. good rate. I know we had that's a, a good rate. That's a good rate. So I don't know if you remember, but we had a program back in high school where um, we just had a teacher who happened to be we did. Um, first a aid. licensed, a licensed, uh, like a first responder or something. But he held a training class where he Fuck. got a bunch of our I don't know, our, man. Our students licensed as first responders, so. <laughs> It wasn't yeah. about like riding in ambulances, but it was giving people the same training. So if you're at like the scene of an accident, you are like medically capable of yeah. actually helping someone out. And it was super that cool. That same but... teacher, by the way, that same teacher, by the way, that same teacher now has a startup. It's called Saving Nine. And what they do is they go around all across the country teaching people in rural areas how to how to take care of basic emergencies like if a person has a broken leg how to transport their body into the ambulance if That's a person's cool. passed out how to carry, how to carry them into a, in, into a safe position and all that so all the basic things that i'm pretty sure you know of, but not but the general population doesn't really know know anything about it's their mission to like you know just make generally aware the aware the population of how to take care of somebody in a in a bad situation and i remember one really funny thing like, is that we had a Sean friend. Sean wait wait yes sir yeah, take it away, take it away. You, you take okay. it away and then I'll, and then I'll go. You take <laughs> right, it away and then I'll go. Sorry. But we had a friend who was in this training program, and I remember not too long later, a couple of months after the program ended, we'd all taken a trip to another city for a uh, just a theater festival. And at that festival, oh, our yeah. friend who was you know fully trained <laughs> as a first responder fell and she like injured her ankle. And I think there were at least three people there who were like trained as first responders and they all looked at that ankle and they were like okay this is 100 percent a sprain you know so 
she just got up and went about her day and then like she came to school like the next day the day after that and then the third day she comes in and she's in like this massive cast and she's like oh yeah i was wrong it wasn't a sprain i fractured my foot oh yikes so it, it was just really funny yikes. because you know they they were the only people who know. would have known that Sean, it was not do you have interesting a sprain stories like it was that. a fracture yeah, yeah Sean, do you have interesting stories like that but while working as an emt i'm sure you have some Oh, yeah, sure. Um, one that sticks out to me the most would be... So, one of the most common calls that you get is chest pain, right? Um, some old person starts having chest pain. Okay. And all you have to do is kind of transport them to the, to the hospital. So, we got a chest pain call and we're on our way. We get to the scene and we realize that the patient has a, a heart attack, right? Um, so... Oh, okay. Within seconds, you just go from being real casual, uh, it's just a transportation call to like life saving, you know, um, some kind of crazy mission. Because when someone's heart yeah. stops, then um, every second matters, right? Because yeah, um, it really comes down to like whether can mm. you you can like supply the blood through to your brain so that it doesn't die. Uh, so we just like I was I was still in high school too, so that was like the first like very serious call that I've had, but um. Yeah, I think Oof. I think it, it really depends on what kind of team you have under those kind of stress because um, I was able to kind of stay calm and collected because all my colleagues were also um, veterans in, in this field and we started CPR, which is um, just giving them a heart resuscitation and then yeah. uh, we transported the patient to the hospital and the next day we got an email saying um, he lived, uh, he, he survived. But, oh, nice. Yeah. I'll say that's Dude, that like the, one of the more interesting calls. <laughs> that must be so intense, man. Like crazy respect. Yeah, I know like as I, a high school really when you're like, when you're in a high high call like that, it's Dude. It's, it's super intense. Wow. Most a few months ago I'm, 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 pressure, I'm gonna man. expand upon this a Me few included. months ago. I went to I, I went to the emergency in a hospital. I went to the emergency in a hospital and this one patient he had a heart attack. I'm pretty sure it was due to COVID and everything wow. and my mom just had to get like her get like a few vitals checked and everything. So I saw the doctors legitimately work for an hour straight pumping that guy's fucking yeah. chest. They were going at it, taking turns. One doctor would take breaks. They were all drenched in sweat because they all had their PPE fucking uh, suits and right, shit. Right. So they were all drenched in sweat. Dude, I literally saw this one good doctor take off his shirt, do this, <laughs> buckets, like literally a shit ton of sweat came out and then just wore it back on. And then he just like, you know, got back to work after like a five or 10 minute break. And they were on that guy for like an hour. And, and then after that night, I have a massive respect for healthcare healthcare professionals like legitimately like i i call every single person that i know who's becoming a doctor or who, or who is a doctor <laughs> i'm like dude i saw this happen from my own with my very own eyes and i have so much more respect for you there's no way in hell that i that i will not like you know give you the credit where it's due but yeah you're you're part of them so i have a massive respect for you guys man <laughs> nah, i i uh i actually am not on emt anymore i stopped um, around sophomore year of college just because um, I did it because I was interested yeah. in a, a medical field but then I realized that I didn't want to get into medicine anymore so I, uh, I stopped that but honestly mm -hmm. like it was it's, it's one of the most um, I guess more challenging experiences of my life where it kind of helped me you know um, under pressure mm -hmm. yeah okay what I want to talk about next is that you have you started a nonprofit called uh, Illuma and it sounds really interesting because if I'm not wrong, what you do is you pair underprivileged or low income students in high school with similar college mentors who can guide them. And I think that's really cool because while mentorship's important, what people don't often realize is that your mentors need to understand where you're coming from. And right. like things like income especially can make very big differences to what your options are. So what led you to do that? How, how does one go about just starting a nonprofit? Yeah, so so what happened is I came to this country. Um, this is my 10th year in America. Um, came here, didn't speak the language. Um, we didn't have that much money. Where are um, you from? We didn't know that many people. Oh, I'm from I'm from Korea. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. And going through the American education system with essentially no resources, it's tough, you know, um, you don't get to um, 
you don't get to have um, advice that a lot of people get because their parents went to college. You don't um, really know what's going on. So everything is trial and error. And when I got to fresh, when, when I became a freshman year, I realized them like I struggle so much. And is there is there anything that I can do to kind of provide for people who are going through the same thing, uh, same thing that I went through? Because what I believe is every person has the potential to be great in life, if only um, they have the right guidance from the right people, right? So. I mean, I was lucky enough that um, although I didn't have many resources, my parents were super supportive. Um, so I just got to do whatever I wanted to do. But I know that's not the case for a lot of people. And I was just like one of the lucky ones, you know, and I just wanted to kind of give back and pay forward almost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I started the nonprofit yeah. my freshman year. Um, the program, as you explained, um, Salman, mm -hmm. um, is about pairing under-resourced mm -hmm. high school students to first-gen low-income college students attending top universities. And what we did was we we hosted like a month long mm. uh, workshop during summer where um, these students can learn soft skills. Um, why soft skills is because we realized that after having gone to college, soft skill is something that's so prevalent and that's something that can uh, make a huge difference. But because um, a lot of these kids don't have their parents around or um, have their parents around, but they're not from this country, so they can't really teach them. So we thought that would make the greatest impact on um, these under-resourced high school students' life as um, it did for me uh, when I was in college, when I was trying to pick up these um, networking soft skills. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we did. Um, right now, we seized the operation because um, a lot of the founding members and then the cohort after us, they're graduating. Um, so naturally, we um, stopped doing it, but yeah, Honestly, um, that was the best mm -hmm. experience of my life thus far, and um, really founding and running really? a nonprofit like that um, is what kind of got me to uh, transition from being a pre med student to more business oriented student because I realized that um, for pre med classes, if the uh, input is this much, um, the output that I yielded was only like this much. Um, even though I spent every single day studying, like it was really hard to get over. Um, the ROI. Exam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was said very the... scientifically, you know, yeah. <laughs> the input, the output, like, yeah, reminds me of one of my engineering classes, but no, I really respect that. It's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm sure that's helped a lot of people. So really that's, that's awesome to hear, man. It's, it's cool to see people. Sean, one thing, one thing that I want to know is that how yeah. many people, how many people did you put through school? Like how many people did you connect to a really good school? through your nonprofit, like do you have a, a rough number in your head like how many kids did, like you know lives did you make at the end of the day yeah so we had 31 mentors uh include uh excluding me so 32 in total and we had about um one 152 students uh, high school students go through our program and um the whole point mm -hmm. wasn't you know one thing that i didn't like about the traditional i guess um, education space is that everything is so focused on hey did you get into Harvard hey did you get into um, Ivy League schools right and that's mm -hmm. not that's not really how um, it works for a lot of people you know some people are early early bloomers um, they um, find what they like and they work exceptionally hard at it and they get into these amazing schools but also there are other people who just don't maximize their potential earlier in their life and I think it's kind of cruel for um, people to judge them based on what schools they get into um, because everyone has the potential to be you know, agree, amazing bro. in life um, even later in life so our focus was really not really on the um, admission side of things but rather um, when these guys, when these students want to excel in life, like when they decide that this is it, I'm going to get my shit together, I'm going to uh, make sure that I succeed, like do they have the right tools to do so? And um, that tools, those tools um, that we believed was the most, um, um, the most effective tools for those, um, when, when the time comes would be soft skills, um, learning how to talk to people, learning how to yeah. you know, network and all that. So that's, that's really, uh, that was really I mean... what's behind the alumni's motive. Yeah, I can, I can say for sure that that's a really important thing that people don't notice because all the hiring managers like at my internship and otherwise that I've spoken to, they're all about soft skills. Because if you go to any half decent college, you're going to learn maths, physics, whatever right. technical skills you need. But being able to talk to people, being able to be part of a team, networking, those are the real skills there that'll get you anywhere. And it's super cool to see someone help kids focus on that, you know, as early as high school, because that's what a lot of people are missing. So that's, yeah. that's Sean, really great sure. there. 
straight up straight straight up i was just uh, i i think about this a lot like what were the misconceptions that i had in high school that i would have that if i could go back in time i would tell myself to focus on these few things and one and one of those thing one of the few of the things are learn to talk to people learn to shake everybody's hand in a room and and make eye contact with them and let them know who you are so that you can establish a relationship with them relationships go a long fucking way sean Absolutely. networking Absolutely. goes a long way your relationships will do more for you than any piece of paper any or any grade you person might have graduated from penn person might have graduated from harvard or or stanford and all that that doesn't mean shit if you can't even go look look a person in the eye and you know state your intentions and state that hey my name is sean kwan or my name is sad mahmood and i'm here to do this 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 and yes. I, and i want you to help me out or and vice versa see i feel like i feel like the main thing i feel like i i i really understood this late however i have been subconsciously acting upon it is that guys at the end of the day it's who you know it's what you it's it's who you know yeah. man like who do you know who who you know is what's what's going to get you to the next level it's not your degree it's not it's not your fancy fancy you know college name even though that is that does help to an extent but it's at the end of the day it's who you know it's how it's how you're going to network it's how you're going to use that contact or or whatever to you know advance further in your career and yeah i don't know if you agree with that but that's just my take on this oh no, yeah absolutely and those skills are all learnable too right like everyone should be able to kind of get an opportunity to learn about that totally. because people don't even know what they don't know so yeah that's that's really uh, what we try to do exactly yeah exactly all right and man this has been like a really heavy episode and i know we're getting close to 20 minutes but we haven't even talked about airship so sean why don't we jump into that <laughs> <laughs> that's another another thing you've been involved in starting it up and i believe you yeah it's a, it's a platform so many. for people and companies to get advice is that correct yeah so airsip is a short video q and a app for advice where people can kind of ask any kind of questions and get uh replies from you know people who have a personal experience and what you're going through um give you personal advice through uh videos less than 60 seconds um Really why um, Airship was founded is because through running Illumina, what I wanted to, my original goal was to um, have Illumina spread nationwide and um, have it be something that can, you know, really make a difference in people's lives. But what I realized is that because people don't know what they don't know, it's, it's really hard. Dude. It's really hard to um, get even like these high school students to reach mm. out to you voluntarily or like, um, you know, seek resources, right? Um, which, you know, to be fair, like I wasn't really great at when I was in high school. So what I realized is that it doesn't take much to change people's lives. It doesn't take much for you to motivate people. And you don't really need like a whole full out mentorship program to get that kind of um, impact in your life. You know what I mean? All it takes is just like one advice. And I started focusing on you know how can we how can we make sure that everyone gets advice like personal tailor uh, advice when they really need it in their lives right i mean because if you think about it going back mm. to well at least like very personally like applying to colleges even in colleges like looking for my first internship all that just like a lot of embarrass embarrassing episodes uh, they involve me um kind of getting through uh, stuff and then like learning it and what would have really solved the problem was if I had someone who know who who have been through this, um, giving me advice on what I should do, what I need to do to kind of cut corners or like save time on certain things. So that's really what we're focused on. Um, like an example mm. of how things work on Airship is, let's say like an incoming Vanderbilt freshman, um, can ask like, hey, what does it what does it feel like to live on freshman campus? And someone who's already living on campus can give you like a um, 60 second mini dorm tour on what it feels like to live on campus and a couple tips on, you know, what's so special about this college or, you know, whatever. And another example could be, um, let's say you just got into weightlifting, right? Um, and you wanna, you wanna get some feedback on your um, form so you can, Film out, you, you can record a video of yourself doing like a squat and ask, hey, can I get some feedback on my form? And someone who's good mm -hmm. at uh, squatting can kind of reply okay. with a video saying, hey, you can improve in these and these parts so, and like this really is the smart. proper form. So is it like a social media app? Is it a it social, social media, media app? app? Is that what it is? Because like, that's what it's some, it is a social media app, right? And, and do you vet people who, who give advice or, or can anybody give advice? 
anybody, anybody can both ask questions and also uh, get advice. Dude, I think that's and, really all right. cool. All right, all right. Um, that is, that is, that's an interesting so way my, to go. My thought okay. is, so since you're starting up, are you focusing on like a particular thing, like oh, college students in particular, or because I can imagine like people in all industries would one day want to use this app, right? But right. obviously, it'll take time to reach a point where you actually have someone who can answer their questions. So, are you Absolutely. starting out with like a focus yeah. on college students or something like that? Yeah, we're we're definitely starting with uh, college students. Uh, more specifically, we're starting with Vanderbilt student uh, at the moment. Um, the reason being like. Uh, Salman, you're right. right that uh, this is something that could be used by anybody, approach. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Facebook approach. Um, the Facebook yeah, it approach. Could be used by anybody, the Facebook but... approach. Harvard <laughs> student. Harvard students inter like you know Harvard students were used to use that social right, media right. app to network with each other in, on the inside, and then eventually it expanded out. Um, yeah. You're smart, Sean. You're smart. Get Zucks you on your what? side. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about social media, especially in new ones, is that. It's really hard to get people to use it because by definition, network is something where oh, yeah. you only get true value out of it if there are a lot of people on it. But then how do you get a lot of people on it if there's no value? So it's exactly. kind of like a chicken and egg problem. And how we try to solve it, uh, me and my co-founder Will, mm. um, is we wanted to migrate existing communities onto Air Airsip. So um, Airsip is very much a com community driven uh, social media, kind of similar to Reddit in that way. Um, we have I see. communities which are similar to subreddits. Yeah, I was going to say Reddit. Okay, very nice. That's I was what say I've been thinking the whole time. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah, yeah and uh, we, we, yeah. what we're doing right now is just making partnerships with student organizations so that they can kind of, we can kind of migrate each community onto our platform so that it's like lively and then it's engaged without me even you know begging them to yeah, can you please use our app you know what i mean so that's that's kind of the approach that we're taking right now yeah 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 that's that's super cool dude i think Smart that is boy. a great idea i really hope that works out and i'd love to use <laughs> it one nice. day in the future man dude but guys on that note we've dude, i feel, I feel, I feel like one way that you wait 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 okay, wait take wait. it away so take it away take it away i want to say one thing Sorry. i want to say one thing yeah yeah, 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 I want to say one thing. Um, Sean, have you thought about um, using using technology that might be readily available in the future to your advantage right now? Like you guys could introduce a VR section and nobody's using, like Facebook isn't using or, or Instagram isn't using. Maybe you can use a VR feature in your app right now, which you can work on and expand. And, and by the time VR becomes like, you know, widely accepted, you guys are already ahead of the game. Have you thought about things like that? Yeah, um, I think. VR might be hard, but AR, augmented reality, um, is definitely something that we're really interested in because yeah. um, the thing about videos is that All you right. kind of have to put yourself out there, right? Some people don't feel comfortable doing that. So what we're thinking mm. would be really great is um, if we can have something like Snapchat filters on our uh, platform so that like people look, at least mm. people feel confident when they're posting videos. They don't need to like, um, I don't know, I like, see. get super like like ready, yeah, and then, you know, okay. you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. yeah, that's something that we're yeah, thinking yeah. about, but I totally get it, man. Obviously, the challenge is uh, uh, because it's me and my co-founder, and he's the will. My co-founder is the only person who's coding. Uh, the re uh, time, time, and also yeah. just uh, it's tough. Resources is uh, yeah. not there yet. So yeah, that's that's probably we're... something you could do in the future. Dude, I wish you the best of luck, man. Yeah, thank Good you so luck, much. Dude. I wish you the best of luck, man. And on that note, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're done. Peace. Adios. Goodbye. <laughs>